Hello, this is W0OTM with the IHAB project, the Iowa High Altitude Ballooning Project. Uh, today I thought I'd give you a quick tour of the IHAB 2 payload. Uh, IHAB 2 launch is scheduled for October 2nd, uh, 2010. And so I uh, thought we'd take a brief uh, moment here and kind of give you a quick tour of, uh, of what we'll be flying in the IHAB 2 launch. If you uh, followed the IHAB 1 launch, uh, you'll notice uh, that we're using the same uh, foam container, uh, expanded polystyrene container uh, that we used in the IHAB 1 launch. Uh, very, dense, uh, very dense foam uh, and, and provides for a nice uh, rigid and lightweight container. So we liked it in the IHAB 1 launch uh, and so we're going to continue to use these particular containers. Uh, you'll notice uh, one change uh, right off the bat in the I have one launch. Uh, if you remember, there was a 35 millimeter lens filter that we used as a lens protector, uh, and uh, we noticed in the I have one launch that we got a tremendous amount of condensation uh, on the on the on the lens filter itself. So we have removed that for this launch, uh, letting the uh, camera lens be exposed uh, to the outside. And we certainly expect that that will uh, improve and eliminate uh, our fogging and uh, issues that we had in the iHeb 1 launch. We're using the same nylon harness that we used uh, as well. This uh, proved to be a really uh, handy and, and sturdy way of connecting uh, the payload to the, uh, to the launch lines, the parachute, uh, and the rest. And so we will reuse uh, these as well uh, for, for the IHEB 2 launch. So inside the payload, we take the cover off and we, uh, we have some insulation foam here, which is a nice spacer, makes everything nice and tight. Uh, one big change that we did make in the IHEB 2 payload is, is in the uh, compared to the IHEB 1. In IHEB 1, uh, we took uh, styrofoam, um, the polystyrene blocks, and and kind of melted uh, the melted the foam so the the electronics kind of nestled um, into into the respective pieces of foam. Uh, it was it was a nice and it was a quick and dirty way of doing it, but it wasn't the the the, the ideal method. So this round, uh, we're designing things on platters and mounting all of the electronics on platters. And these, uh, these platters are just uh, some of this, what's called corrugated plastic. It's sometimes used for, sometimes used for uh, outdoor signing. Uh, very lightweight, very sturdy. And so all of the electronics are being uh, kind of mounted to these, uh, these, these platters. And we'll be able to interchange these platters um, as we do additional launches. Uh, so this first layer is the APRS platter. Uh, it consists of uh, an Elenco DJC7, uh, which is a nice lightweight dual band um, HT. It has a built in LiPo battery, uh, which gives us uh, roughly eight hours of runtime. Uh, the antenna, as you can see, comes off the top of the radio uh, and then out the side. Uh, it's a 19 inch uh, long piece of uh, 22 gauge speaker wire. Uh, worked out really well in the I have one launch. So, again, that's something that we, we stuck to. Um, worked really really well. We've also got an open tracker um, uh, APRS uh, TNC here uh, with the high altitude GPS. We're powering uh, this combination uh, with a 7.2 volt uh, two cell LiPo um, which again we think is going to give us uh, which gave us at least a good eight hours of runtime which uh, was lighter weight um, and longer than the uh, nickel metal hydride batteries that we used in the I have one launch so uh, this platter uh, just kind of lifts uh, straight up and out um, we'll take the antenna out the side here and then we'll lift this whole tray up which is nice is that this tray then becomes a you know an independent power um, and again can be interchanged in, in, in additional launches as as, uh, as needed so the next layer down uh, is the uh, 20 meter beacon uh, as you remember in the I have one launch we uh, added a 20 meter beacon uh, to the payload which um, proved to be an ex extremely successful. Uh, so this, uh, we wanted to use the same same kind of uh, idea here. Uh, we're using the same easy keyer, uh, which is a very inexpensive, lightweight, basic uh, three memory uh, CW keyer uh, made by the Four States Group. It's a kit, very inexpensive and works extremely well. So we're using that again. And then you'll notice that the, the overall uh, 20 meter uh, radio and control circuit is uh, much, much smaller and lightweight 
point uh, than its predecessor in the I Have One uh, launch. Uh, Terry WA0ITP did a great job uh, redesigning uh, this Class E uh, based radio. Puts out 1.6 uh, watts and runs off of a 9 volt uh, lithium battery. Uh, in our test, we got uh, a tremendous amount of runtime out of it and uh, and proved to be a great success. Again, you can see uh, the antenna comes out uh, the side of the payload here on the side, um, and then we'll attach the 66 foot long uh, wire uh, to this, uh, like we did in the uh, I Have One launch as well. So beneath this payload, or beneath this, uh, this platter, we'll pull the speaker wire out here. Beneath this platter, uh, we've got uh, the same uh, Motorola i290 uh, prepaid cell phone. It has a built-in GPS uh, and uploads uh, GPS coordinates to a separate website than the APRS uh, tracking. Uh, really provides uh, great, uh, great tracking um, uh, capabilities at low altitudes, uh, lower altitudes than, uh, than the low-powered APRS transmitter can get. Uh, also, this time around, uh, we've changed out cameras. In the I Have One launch, we used uh, a PowerShot A470. Uh, so this launch, we've changed to a PowerShot A480. Um, this is uh, a, this is the lightest uh, Canon PowerShot camera that they that it, that they've made. This is a 10 megapixel camera. Also, was loaded with the uh, same CHDK uh, firmware and uh, script that we've written uh, for taking photos photographs every uh, 10 seconds. So uh, we will, uh, once we turn the camera on, uh, the lens will protrude out and uh, we've made it so that at that point uh, the lens can then be placed, uh, the uh, camera can be installed and, and placed uh, there with uh, sticking out the side of the payload. Worked out extremely well. Also, we have our first um, canister lab. Uh, canister labs are a trademarked activity uh, that's uh, from the IHAB project. Canister laboratories are um, small laboratories that are sent up in uh, any IHAB launch. Uh, these laboratories, uh, this particular one is being done by KD0JHW. Inside of his uh, canister laboratory, uh, he's sending up a roll of 400 millimeter film, um, hoping to uh, see the effects of cosmic rays at the altitude so this is our first uh, launch with a canister lab and so it will nestle down here at the bottom of the payload uh, and uh, we will be excited to see uh, the outcomes of, um, of of that science experiment uh, when we recover the when we recover the payload so uh, overall payload weighs uh, right about 1200 grams this time around which is about a 400 gram uh, decrease um, from the I have one launch so uh, we expect uh, we expect to have a great launch on October 2nd so thanks everybody for watching and uh, again this is W0 OTM with the I have project and uh, giving a tour of the uh, I have two payload